Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday to you from a totally different angle in this room. <laughs> How are you? How's everybody doing out there? Are you guys having a good week so far? I hope that you are. Hello to everybody in YouTube land. Hello, Ruby, Cecilia, Kim, Lisa, Mary. Hi, hi. Erleen, hello. Jan is here. Colleen is here. Alicia's here. Everybody's in the house. Everybody's in the house. Hey, how you doing? Jen says she's watching Meredith and Tucson live. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hi, Wendy. Facebook's making its way in. Hi. Sally says it's cold in West Virginia. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Nicole. Nicole just jumps right in with a sign up for text updates. <laughs> So hello, she is straight to business today. She is on it. <laughs> she says, I got this. I got this. Hi, Mary. Hi, Patty. Colleen says the studio looks so different. I know. I know. It's pretty crazy. It's amazing to me how much room there is in this room now. It's just like, it's, it's pretty awesome. Oh my gosh. All right. So it's Tuesday. And I know a lot of you guys are probably going to end up watching this on the replay because there are so many of you who are either in Tucson at the moment or are watching somebody's live in Tucson. There are so many lives that are happening right now um, at this moment, moments ago, moments later. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that everybody is kind of like spread thin as far as like where your attention goes. And I totally get it. That's totally fine. Um, when everybody travels to Tucson, I know that, you know, this everybody's schedule is a little bit different. So I don't expect to have the same crowd that we always have here. Um, but I do expect everybody to uh, all of our regulars will probably be watching this on replay. And I want to tell you, this is a fun one. Even if you know about square knots, even if you know how to add beads to square knots, you might learn something a little different today. Who knows? That's my goal. So let me tell you what it is that we're doing. Um, we are going to be putting together a bracelet using some of the beetle on Belon. We're also using the tying station and we're going to be doing square knots, but we're doing square knots where we're adding beads. And I'm going to show you how to do that in two different ways. Um, one of the ways is actually kind of new to me, actually. I thought that, you know, I knew all the ways to add beads to square knots. Turns out I was wrong. Um, <laughs> Who knew that there was yet another way to incorporate a bead into a knot, which is always one of my favorite things. So super excited about that. Plus, somebody last week had asked me if I cared to do a tying station project. And of course, I was happy to oblige. So uh, yeah, we're going to look at the tying station a little bit. We're going to look at uh, the beelon. We're going to look at some donut beads, you guys, because I'm using a donut as the focal for this bracelet. If you're interested in donut focals over at Sam's Speed Shop, there are tons of focals. And he told me this morning that he's actually grabbing some more focals or some more donut beads while he's in Tucson. So if you've not used donut, you're going to need a donut. <laughs> I like donut projects because I feel like some people don't know what to do with them. So this is a cool one, right? All right. All right. So we're going to get started right now. Now, listen, everybody, everything looks different, right? So my iPad is in a different location. So just bear with me because I'm, this is the first time I've ever used it in this setup. So cross your fingers that everything looks good. Everything goes as planned. <laughs> Sometimes things go off the rails here. We all know. All right. Then turn you around. All right. All right. Oh, it worked. It worked. Now, here's the thing. I can't get super, super close. Uh, so I'll probably be holding things up from now on if we ever need to get super close on things, which is kind of a hassle. But I'm just kind of dealing with as much space as I've got here. Just and get a little bit closer, but not much. Okay. Because this is like literally in my lap now. All right. So let's talk about the tying station. Excuse me. Stop eating that. So my dog is trying to carry off the hammer I was using. Okay. So for those of you who have never seen the tying station before, or maybe you've seen it in the stores and are not quite sure what it is or what to do with that, I'm going to give you the brief rundown of the tying station. So the tying station is this really cool gadget. It's all made out of acrylic except for the washer and the wing nut and the peg. Um, and it is a really good way to create projects where 
you need to secure either the top or the bottom or both in order to get your hands underneath, right? You got both hands free so you can get your hands underneath. This cutout section here is perfect for that because you can really get your fingers underneath the project. Also, it's got a handy ruler right along the side. So if you want to measure your work as you go. Also, you can adjust the bottom so that if you are working on a shorter project, you don't have to keep it all the way down here at 10 inches. You can make it a little bit shorter. There are holes in the acrylic pegs that you can use to attach certain things. We've used these to attach ear wires if we were making earrings. Um, lots of different things that you can do with the little holes here. Also comes with a squishy plate um, that you can use in uh, in instead of the regular acrylic plate where you if you're working on a piece that is longer than your tying station and you need to attach it somewhere in the middle, you can use the squishy piece um, so that it doesn't damage your work. OK, so basically what this is, is a hands free way to do your to attach your projects, whether it's friendship style bracelets or a stringing project or whatever. There are a lot of uses for this. So I don't want you to think that this is only for friendship style bracelets and knotting. You literally can use this for any kind of stringing project or knotting project. I've even used this for wire projects. So a lot of uses for this guy. OK, all right. So our project we are using the tying station i'll get to that in just a second we're using some b lawn for this now b lawn i know a lot of you know what s lawn is it's just nylon cord b lawn is beetalon's version of the s lawn and for me i it, just my personal opinion it is a little bit superior of a product just because it has this kind of grippy texture to it yes it's nylon cord but there is something that they've done to it i'm not quite sure what it is it's almost like a waxed waxed cord nylon cord hybrid because it does have a little bit of structure to it. it has this grippy kind of substance on it that it doesn't make it uncomfortable or scratchy by any means but it means that when you tie knots with this they kind of grip onto each other which i think makes it awesome i'm not sure what it is that they do to it but it keeps it from being less slippery than your regular s lawn you can buy beetle on from the beetle on website um it, and of course i've seen it in the box stores as well and it comes in a lot of different colors this is the copper we're going to be using for our project. We're also using some stone donuts. This one is a piece of impression Jasper that I got from Sam from Sam's Bead Shop. And um, you can use any donut that you want to or any kind of circle component that you might want to use as your focal. So that's the center. I've already done one side of this one. I'm going to show you um, how to do this, right? How to add the beads this way on the opposite side of this. And then I'm gonna show you another way to add beads. And this way almost looks like the goddess style bracelets that I have done several different ways. This is very similar to that in that it has that kind of chevron pattern. So I'm gonna show you this way first, and then we're gonna skip over and do it this way, okay? All right, so let's get started. So when you use a focal in the center of a friendship bracelet, that means you can't do, you can't start from one end and work your way to the other. You've got to start, if you're going to use a tying station in particular, you've got to start on or in the middle and do half and then do the other half. So one half is already done, okay? And we're going to do the other half. So what I'm going to do because since half of this is already ready, I'm going to secure this to the tying station. So I'm up here at the top. I'm going to take the wing nut off. All right. And I'm going to take the washer and the acrylic plate off. And then I'm going to put, whoops, I didn't mean to take, where's my other acrylic plate? Um, I'm missing a plate. Hold on a second. <laughs> what is happening here? Okay, so I'm going to use the plate on the other one. I don't know what happened to the acrylic plate that goes on this one. There is really no telling in this room, so give me just a second. Okay. Here's the acrylic plate that we're using on the other one. I'm going to take the acrylic plate. I don't know where my squishy piece is, but... I'm going to be gentle. I'm going to lay my knotted section that I've already done, which we haven't done together yet, but I'm going to put that underneath the acrylic plate. Um, I would normally use the squishy plate for this just to protect my work, especially if you were going to need to put the beaded part underneath. Okay. 
I'm going to tighten that down. Okay. Now I'm working not at the, not at zero, right? Now I'm working at, let's see, two and a half would be the center, almost two and a half, two and a quarter is the center of my hole. That's fine. I'm not super worried about the measuring part of this um, at the moment. Just know that since we are, we've already done half, we're not, we're not set at zero. Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to attach the cord that I'm going to use for the second half of this. You're going to need two pieces. I thought I had, oh, I did. You're going to need two pieces of Belon, um, and those pieces need to be like, I don't know, 14 inches, something like that. And you need two of those. You're going to take those, find the end, stick the two ends through your donut, and then you're going to find the middle. So just bring your ends together, okay? And once you've found the middle, you're going to come down here to the other end of the tying station, and you're going to secure your ends. Now, you can scoot it up if you need to because you're not going to be using the entire length of the tying station. I'm not going to take my acrylic plate all the way off. I'm just going to loosen it enough so that I can take my cords and slide it between the acrylic plates here and then I'm going to tighten it back down. Now sometimes it does come undone as you work that's just kind of part of it because you're really pulling on it um, as you go so you may need to retighten down here but that's what you've got so far. So this piece is nice and tight so we can knot around it. All right, now, as far as our knotting piece, we need another piece of Belon, and you want that one to be about 28 inches long, which is about double what the, um, the other pieces were, okay? So let me grab my scissors here, cut my piece, okay? Now, I also am using some beads for this. Like you can see, I've added beads to about an inch worth of the bracelet after the focal. So I'm going to show you how to do that as we go. <coughs> and then we're going to do another inch of just the knot. So we're doing square knots. I'm using 80 Delica beads for this. You don't have to use Delicas. I like the look of the Delica because they're all very um, similar in shape and size. They're like super consistent in, in their shape. Uh, but you can use whatever you want to here. You could even use three millimeter, two millimeter, even four millimeter beads. It's totally up to you. But I liked the Delicas. So that's what I'm going to use for our little project here. I don't need a lot of them. All right. So now I'm going to take my 28 inch piece of Belon and I'm going to take it underneath all of the cords that are here. Now there's two on the top and two on the bottom, right? So we've got four cords total. We're going to refer to those as the core. And you want to find the center of that piece of Belon that is now running underneath all of those. And we're going to create a square knot around all four cords. Okay. Now I'm going to do the square knot pretty slow. So if you've never done a square knot before, uh, you're going to get to see it several times. Um, but if you need a little extra help with square knots, I've got tons of project videos on YouTube and on Facebook that you can watch on replay where we do square knots a lot. Okay. All right. So the square knot happens in two steps and you're going to start with the right cord. You're going to take the right handed cord and you're going to create a P shape with it. And the P shape is the stick of that P is going to be these core cords here in the center. Your P shape, that hump shape for your P is with that cord that's running underneath. This is your knotting cord. You want that cord to be running across the top of the core cords. Okay. So it's running across the top and it's going out this direction. We're going to take the left-handed cord. We want to be sure that it crosses over that cord that we have taken and run out this direction. And then we want to go behind all the core and then up through that P shape that we made on the right, right? And then we're going to pull. That's step one. Now remember, square knots happen in two steps. You've got to do both steps or you're going to end up with a spiral, okay? So that's step one. And I'm going to push that up, my knot up right next to my focal, 
Okay. And now we're going to do step two. Step two is exactly like the first step, except that it's on the opposite side. So we're going to take that cord on the left and we're going to make that backwards P shape. You can call it a, a Q if you want to. Okay. We're doing the backwards P shape. The cord is running over the top of the core. We're taking the right handed piece, cross it over that one. And then again, just like the other, it goes behind all of the core cords. If I can hold on to it, it goes behind all of the core cords and up through that backwards P shape. And then you're going to pull. Now, if your initial first step gets loose, you can pull it tight and then go ahead and pull the second tight. Okay. And that's your square knot happens in two steps. If you don't do both steps, you don't have a square knot. Okay. All right. So that is the square knot. Now we're going to jump right in and start adding beads. Okay. So you're going to do one square knot. Then the next square knot, we're going to add beads. And we're going to do that seven times. Okay. So we're going to follow those exact same step, steps, but every single time we make a knot, we're adding beads to this. So each strand is going to get a bead. So I'm going to pick up my right strand and I'm going to add a bead to it and I'm going to drop that bead down. I'm going to pick up the left strand and I'm going to add a bead to it and I'm going to drop that bead down. Okay. Now I'm going to proceed with my knot as if those beads don't exist, right? It doesn't change the steps of the square knot at all. So we're doing... P shape on the right, left cord goes across that, behind and up through, and then we're going to pull. And when you pull, it's going to set those beads on either side of the core cords, okay? Then you're going to do the left side of this to really lock that in place, right? So you're going to do the second step of your knot, which is that backwards P. Your right cord goes across that, behind it, and up through. And pull. Okay, so now you've set those beads in place. And you can see they're going to sit on either edge of the core cords. Okay, all right, so now we're ready to do again. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a bead to each one. So drop a bead down on the right. Hey, Katie. We're going to drop a bead down on the left. Okay. And then we're going to do another square knot. Okay. So P shape, left-handed cord goes behind and up through. Thank you, Pamela. And then pull. And then we're going to do the left. So that backwards P shape, the Q, the nine, whatever works for you, right? And then the right cord crosses over that, goes behind and up through and pull. And that sets that in place. Okay. All right. We're going to do this five more times. So where's the silly kitty? The kitties are actually out of the room at the moment. Um, I have, I've banned them from the office when I'm doing my lives because especially when I'm using this cord, because they will not stay off of the desk and I cannot get anything done. And they really love the B-Lon. They love hemp more though. I think it just, just chews better, but yeah, I, they take it and chew on it. And then when I pick it up, it's all wet. It's just gross. <laughs> so they're not allowed in here right now. <laughs> all right. Our P shape on the right. Left side. <laughs> the joys of having cats. It's so funny. My dogs are just as bad, though. If I leave anything in the floor, it's over. Especially with the puppy. All right. We're doing the left-handed side. And we're going to pull. Now you can see mine has come, the first step of that knot came undone. So I like to snug it down just a little bit. Oh my gosh, thank you, Mary. And then, then pull that second step of the knot. Okay. All right. So we're going to keep on moving. I'm really wanting to show you guys, like, I love this and I think it's beautiful. I really do. I love the way that the beads sit on the outer edges of the core cords with this. 
Um, the other way that we're going to do this is going to have a totally different look, but is very, very similar. So I'm kind of excited to show you that, that one as well. But I do want to get as much of this done as I can. All right, so that was the right side. And then the left side, always be sure you're doing that left side if you're doing this technique, because that's what's going to lock everything in place and keep your bracelet from spinning around. Now, that's not the way we're going to do things. Not, not, that's not, um, I'm being punny and really cheesy. Um, that's not the way we're going to do things with the other techniques that I'm going to show you here in a minute, which is kind of surprising, but um, turns out really beautifully. All right. So yes, mini donuts are going to be awesome with this. Any kind of focal where you can attach your cord on two different sides. It doesn't even have to be a circle. Honestly, you could use like a square. You could use anything you wanted to. All right. P shape on the right. That left-handed cord crosses over, goes behind and you pull it up through. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. <laughs> Kim said, but I'm She'll be here all week, folks. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. So <laughs> backwards P shape. <laughs> oh, Kim, they would boo me off the stage immediately. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. And the left side. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Now, when you're doing beads, it's really easy to count how many knots you've done, right? Because you just count the beads. So we've done five knots, one, two, three, four, five. But when you're doing this without beads, it's a little bit different to count the knots. And I'm going to show you that here in just a second, just so that you can kind of keep up with, with what you're doing if you have to walk away from your project. But we've got two more knots to do with beads. So let's Let's do those real quick. And then we'll do a few knots without. Don't know that I'm going to finish this one because I do want to show you the other. Uh, but I will show you how to finish the bracelet one way or another. <laughs> if it's not this one, it'll be the other one, right? All right. So our P shape on the right. That left cord crosses over that. It goes behind and up through the P shape that we made. And pull. Okay backwards P shape and then the left or I'm sorry the right cord goes behind that and up through and pull all right and then we're going to do one more knot with the beads and then we're going to switch to doing the knots without the beads we'll talk about how you can count those and then we're going to do a completely different technique now, fortunately, you're going to finish both bracelets the exact same way. So whether you decide to do this one or you decide to do the next one that we do, your finishing technique is going to be exactly the same. All right. So we're doing the P shape on the right. We're taking our left cord cross over and then go behind and up through and pull. Okay. Then you're going to do that backwards P shape. That right cord goes behind and up through okay and then we're gonna pull all right so now we've added seven beads on each side one two three four five six seven okay that's exactly how many we did up here now i to finish this off or at least to finish the length part of this i would do another inch of just knots without the beads okay so we're going to do a few of those so that we can really kind of count so I'm going to do the P shape and the left cord goes behind up through. Make sure we do the right side is, or the left side. So backwards P shape, right cord goes behind and up through. Pamela wants to know where she can get a tying station. So the tying station is a Beetle On product. You can grab it from the Beetle On website. I think there is a link that got dropped earlier. Um, and there we go. Nicole dropped it again. Thank you, Nicole. And the cord that I'm using, you can also get from them as well. It's Belon. Um, and if for some reason they happen to be out of stock, you can always grab one on Amazon. Backwards P shape. 
We're going behind and up through. And if you're looking for donut beads, guys, don't forget about Sam's Bead Shop. Sam's got the donuts in stock. He's got a lot of different ones. I think he said he, I don't remember how many different ones. I think he said five. Let me, let me double check what he said. Yeah, he has five different donut beads in stock over at Sam's Bead Shop. And uh, like I said earlier, he's grabbing some more while he's in Tucson. So if you need some donut beads, he's got you covered. All right. So there's our P shape on the right, left cord behind and up through. Are Delica beads the square of shaped ones? No, actually the D Delicas are perfectly cylindrical. Um, they are the most consistent in size and shape as far as seed beads are concerned. Um, I'll show you. So you can see they're perfect little tubes. Perfect little tubes. Though this would look really awesome with any bead. You don't have to use Delicas, guys. Don't feel like you got to go out and look for Delicas because you really don't. Um, you could use, Sam's got some of those hex seed beads. Those would look amazing with this, which I probably should have grabbed and used some for this project just to see what they would look like. Um, but small beads of any kind is going to work and large beads work as well. It just, it, you may not use as many as seven, right? It, it may be less. Okay. So let's stop for just a second and let's talk. And then I'm going to switch to the other technique just so that we have time to do both. But let's talk about how, so we, we talked about it was easy to count how many knots you've done when you've added beads because you just count the beads. But when you haven't added beads to it and you're just doing the square knots by themselves, how do you count, right? Well, I count the little bumps. So there's one, two, three, four, five. I count the bumps on the right side. That's going to tell me how many knots I've done. And that's also going to tell me where I have stopped. Okay, so let me show you. I have stopped with a completed knot. How do I know that? Because I've got a full bump right here, right? So I know that if I have to stop, get up, walk away, come back to this later, I know that my next step when I sit back down is to start with my right-handed cord. Why? Because my bump is finished right? If my bump is not finished, then I need to pick up on the left side. So let me show you. If we've only done the right-handed side, so the P shape on the right, left cord goes behind and up through, and we pull. When I pick this up and I look at it, I don't have a bump on the right-handed side, right? My bump is over here on the left. That means I need to pick up on the left, right? Need to pick up on the left because that's where my bump is. There's no bump on the right. So you always want to pick up if you've walked away or, you know, if you, if you're going to start again, you even just a couple of seconds with me, like I lose my place and I have to, you know, I have to kick a cat out the room or something, <laughs> right? Then you know where to start. So we've only done half the knot because we don't have a full bump on the right. So that means I'm going to, pick up on the left, do my backwards P shape, my right cord goes behind and up through. And pull. Kim says, my mom and I are watching you on YouTube. Is Lovecraft Sarah's real last name? It absolutely, that is my legal last name. Yes, it is. That is really my last name. <laughs> That's funny. Somebody asked me that yesterday. It's been a while since somebody's asked me that. But yes, Lovecraft is really, truly my legal name. <laughs> Um, all right. So that's, there's a full knot there, right? All right. So to finish this bracelet off, as far as the length is concerned, we did about an inch worth of beads, right? We're going to do about an inch worth of the knots. Now I'm not going to finish that, but I'm going to show you. And I will tell you the size of the donut here in just a second. Y'all are funny. Yes, that's my real name. <laughs> I'm not bougie enough to have a stage name. That's really my name. That's so funny. <laughs> All right. So 
All right, this side, I did all of the knots, right? I did all of the knots. It's a little bit more than an inch. It's about an inch and a half, okay? Um, but that's what you're going to do to finish off. So this one, obviously, we would need to go a little bit longer. You can see this is how this is going to look when it gets finished. I will show you the finishing technique. It's going to be it's gonna be the same for both bracelets, so don't feel like you're missing out on anything. Now, the donut focal is a little on the large side. If you wanted to use a mini donut instead, you definitely could. Let me tell you the size of this donut. It is, this is a 30 millimeter donut. So it's a pretty big donut, right? Um, which I, I think is super cool. Um, but might be a little big for some of you. So you might want to make it a little bit smaller. It's totally up to you. This one's Impression Jasper. I, can't, I don't know for sure what Sam's got in his shop because I didn't have time to look. But I do know that he's got, he said, five different ones. All right. So this bracelet, I'm going to sit it to the side. I know we haven't finished it, but we're going to do the other one. Okay. So I'm going to sit this to the side. I'm going to show you a different technique. Okay. So this technique is very similar to what we just did. We did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beads on each side. Okay. But the way you set this up is very different. You can see the way the beads sit is different. You're sitting these in a chevron pattern as opposed to where on this one, they're sitting side by side. Right. So there is a little bit of difference. Sam's in the house. Hey, Sam. Okay, so you can see there's definitely a difference, but the technique is very, very similar. To get this one started, though, that's where the difference is going to come in. So, again, you're going to cut two pieces of the belon that are about four, 14 inches for each side. So, to total overall, you're going to have four pieces that are about 14 inches long. You're going to take two of those pieces, go through the center of the donut, find the middle, just like we did with the other one, right? So if you need to go back and watch the replay on how to get that started, definitely do that at the end, okay? Before you attach this though to the other end of the tying station, you wanna go ahead and load your beads. So for this one, I'm just using regular seed beads, okay? I'm not using Delica's, I'm just using size eight seed beads. And each strand that has been folded in half has seven beads on it which means that since it's folded in half, the strands, two strands are running through these beads, right? Because we folded our, so we folded our cord in half, right? So two strands is running through. Each strand, seven beads, okay? Don't do four strands of beads. <laughs> Double your cord up, right? And go through the beads. Okay, now we're going to take these ends down here to the other end of the tying station. And my tying station is, the pieces are coming apart here. Hold on. Okay, I'm just going to lay those. Now you can lay them on either side of the peg if you want to. I'm going to put mine on the same side. Makes no difference. Acrylic plate goes down. Washer goes down. And then... Our wing nut goes down. Now listen, don't use your tying station without the washer. Don't lose your washer because if you tighten your wing nut down too tight without that washer, you could crack the acrylic. Ask me how I know. So yeah, <laughs> make sure you don't lose your washer with your tying station. Super important. Okay. And tighten that down. Okay. Now we're going to get started with a square knot exactly like we did the previous project. Okay, so I've got another 28 inches. Well, I don't, I need to cut that really quickly. Uh, we're gonna use another 28 inches of, thank you so much, Cecilia, of our B-Lawn, okay? And same thing, we're gonna take it, we're gonna go behind all of those cords, we're gonna find the middle, and then we're gonna we're gonna tie our square knot exactly the same steps that we've done previously. So right-handed or right side first, P shape, cross the core, left goes behind and up through. And then you're gonna pull. And then you're gonna push that up there next to your focal. Okay, now you're gonna do the left side. So backwards P shape, right side, behind and up through. Okay, exactly the same. Now this is where things are gonna get different. 
Okay. Now, remember how I told you your square knot happens in uh, two steps. Pamela asked if I'm using hemp thread. Nope. I am using B-Lon, which is a nylon uh, beading thread or knotting cord or whatever you want to use it for. That is from Beadalon. It's got this kind of, it's not quite wax, but it does have kind of a little a sticky coating to it. So the knots stick really, really well. Comes in a lot of different colors. All right. So <clears throat> this is where things are going to get different. Okay. Like I said, Square knot happens in two steps. The knot that we're going to do now is the same steps as a square knot, but we're only doing one step. So we are going to take a bead. Okay, we're going to alternate sides. We're going to take a bead on the right, push it up. Okay, and I'm going to do that P-shape on the right. P-shape, cross all of those. Left-handed cord goes behind and up through and pull, okay, and you want to pull pretty snug, so snug that the first one, it might not do it, but that, that side kind of wants to go behind the bead, that's fine, okay, now I'm going to push up a bead on the left, <laughs> and I'm going to do the P-shape, okay, P-shape on the left, behind, whoops, behind, <laughs> and up through, and pull. See how that sits the beads a little bit different? So now they're staggered instead of sitting side by side. We're only doing that P-shape once, right? Technically, we're doing it twice, but we're doing a bead in between. So that was a bead on the left. I'm going to slide up a bead on the right. Okay. On the right, we're doing the P shape. Left cord goes behind, up through, and you're going to pull. I like to pull really snug so that it kind of goes behind the bead. I know that's kind of hard to explain, but okay. Now we're going to take a bead on the left side, slide it up, do the P shape on the left, right? Behind with the right and up through and pull. And I'm pulling really snug. Okay. Slide a bead up on the right, P shape. So it's both the same, pretty much the same technique, right? Except that a bead goes for each step and it makes the bead sit at kind of a staggered, in, in a staggered pattern. You get that chevron shape in between with the cord um, as opposed to where they were sitting side by side on the outsides, right? So totally different look gives you a totally different feeling to the overall project. Okay. Slide a bead up on the right, right-handed P-shape. Pull. Slide a bead up on the left. Whoops, just one. <laughs> Do the left-handed P-shape, right? The backwards P. Oh my goodness. My dog has gotten into some things. Hey, Vega. I don't know where her toys are. That's why she's messing up my stuff. <laughs> All right. One on the right. Right side, P shape. And pull. Okay, we're gonna do a left bead. So that makes our backwards P shape. So the difference really is, is that for the first one, we were adding the beads to the knotting cord, where with this one, we're adding the beads, we're sliding them up from the core. And the core has two strands, so a bead alternates as we go, right? 
And that's what gives it that nice kind of chevron pattern because otherwise, if you were just sliding one bead up, you would just have that one bead and the square knot around it. So, all right, we're almost done adding all the beads to this one. Pull. Got two more beads to add. Yes. Jan says these two techniques are beautiful with or without the donut. I agree. And these techniques can be used in a variety of ways in your projects. You don't have to do it exactly like this. You can use these techniques to make really long earrings, which is super cool, you know, and hang something from the bottom of them. Um, you can use great big beads and really thick cord and have some really cool like decorative things. You can make really cool bookmarks if you wanted to like, you really can use these techniques in so many different applications right you can you can use these in so many different projects so all right then when you've added all of your beads just give you a little close-up this is what it looks like and you can see it sort of makes the beads look like little pip beads even though they're not that being said a pip bead would look awesome here um this you can again do with all kinds of beads okay so it doesn't just have to be a seed bead you can do whatever kind of bead you want to use play around with the shapes because you're going to get a totally different look depending on the shape of the beads that you use all right so now once you've added all the beads just like the other bracelet we're going to do about an inch of just square knots so when you stop with the beads you're just going to pick up just like you left off and you're just going to do some square knots Okay, so I'm going to kind of speed through these since we've done the square knot several times together now, um, just so that we can kind of get to the end of this. Now, as far as ending this bracelet is concerned, there are a couple of different things that you can do. But I am personally a fan of the sliding clasp and it just uses square knots. So that's what we're going to do. Um, you don't have to do square knots. You could do half hitch knots. You could do whatever you wanted to as far as your sliding clasp is concerned. Um, or you could simply put cord ends on these pieces of cord. You don't have to do that. I just like the sliding knots uh, because, or the sliding square knot clasp because it makes the bracelet adjustable. And that means it's going to fit a whole lot of people. So if you are creating a bracelet for a booth, a craft booth, or for your website or your Etsy shop or what have you, um, you don't have to worry so much about the size. If you make it adjustable, it's going to fit a wide range of customers, right? Now, just want to mention, this is a really good unisex technique. People ask me all the time about men's jewelry. Um, and men's jewelry tends to be a little bit more simplistic uh, as far as design is concerned. Not always. Um, but when it comes to do-it-yourself men's jewelry, it's usually pretty simple. So that's why I don't ever do like a whole live just on one man's bracelet because a lot of times it's just very repetitive or quick and easy. Um, but this is one of those projects that using the right colors, using the right beads could definitely be a unisex project um, and could very well be a man's bracelet for sure. Doing this with leather and some like... Could you imagine doing this with some leather and like nuts and bolts? Not bolts. The nuts from nuts and bolts <laughs> as the beads. That would be really cool. Um, some large hole beads with leather would be awesome. Some large hole pearls with leather um, or just thicker cord in general. There's so many options. So you really can get a totally different look out of this just by changing the cord up, changing the beads up. Yeah, these are eight seed size eight seed beads. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull my bottom part of my tying station down just a little bit. Okay, and try to finish this up really quickly and then we'll do that clasp. So the clasp is exactly the same thing that we're doing now. It's just square knots, but we're doing it over our ends. Okay. Yeah, small washers would be cool. So many different things. Ooh, a washer in the middle. Yes, you guys have the best ideas. I love it. So my cord's getting a little short here on one side because I wasn't exactly centered with my knotting cord. So 
So we're going to do as many of these as we can. Now, the cool thing about B-Lawn is that you can melt the ends. Because it is nylon, uh, you can use your thread burner, your thread zapper, or you can use a lighter, uh, or you can use glue. Totally up to you. I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. Ginger says she's done leather bracelet with nuts and they were a hit. I agree. I think they're super cool. Um, men and women, right? It just kind of depends on your style because it's a little rock and roll. <laughs> A little rock and roll. I like it. <laughs> Kim says fire. <laughs> Do you guys remember the Michaels class where I was using fire with the B-Lon and I burned through the entire thing? Yeah, that was a disaster. It was funny. Um, wasn't super funny at the time. I was very embarrassed, but... Um... <laughs> I live to teach another day, right? And, and I, I just keeping it real. <laughs> just keeping it real. All right, I'm going to do just one more here. Because my cord on the left is getting a little short. So, all right, I'm going to pull. Okay, so again, when you get, when you've done all the knotting parts, Okay, make sure that they match. I think one of them is a little longer than the other. That's okay. All right, I'm going to take this off of the tying station at this point. Okay, so you can see this is what we've got. Yeah, one side's a little longer than the other. That's okay. You won't notice in the end. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over to what I'm going to call the back. Okay, and I'm going to take my knotting cord and I'm just going to do an overhanded knot. And I'm going to pull that down up against the back of the last square knot that I just tied. Okay, so it's going to be sitting to the back. Now I'm going to come in with my scissors and I'm going to trim off pretty short here. Okay, now this is where you make your decision as to whether or not you're going to use glue or you're going to use fire. <laughs> and I'm going to use fire. We're going to melt the ends. Um I need to trim this one just a little bit shorter. If you're not going to use fire, you want to put glue on the back of that knot right there and let that set up. Make sure you hold your other cords out of the way because you don't want to do what I did and melt through. But a lot of times you just get the flame close. And it will make a little a little ball <laughs> of melted nylon and you just tap it with your finger. Okay. This is going to keep your knot from undoing. And if you feel like you need extra, you can go ahead and add a little bit of glue to that too, if you want to. Okay. Just a little dab of hypo cement. All right. So that's on the back. And now we've, we've got our ends here, right? We have four cords coming this direction. We've got four cords coming out this direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay this down. We're going to take our cords and we're going to run those in opposite directions of each other, right? So just like that to make a circle out of our bracelet, right? And you can actually put this back on the tying station if you want to. Might make it a little bit easier for you. Or you can just lay it down. You can use a piece of painter's tape to hold all of this in place. Um, where is my painter's tape? I like to use the painter's tape. Don't know what I've done with it, though. Okay. So maybe we'll go back to the tying station. <laughs> so if you're going to use your tying station, you're just going to... Slide that gently underneath the plate here, and then you're going to do the same thing down here. Because what you want is to be able to create some square knots over all of these cords, right? The only reason I don't like to do this part on the tying station is because you're working in such a small area that I tend to hit this peg with my hand. But now what you're going to do is you're going to take another piece of the B-Lon and you're going to square knot over all of these. The trick to this, though, is to make sure that you do not 
pull them too tight because if you pull them too tight, you're not going to be able to adjust your bracelet. Uh, it, it makes it very tricky to try. And I, uh, I'm going to take this off the tying station here in just a second, just because I don't, I don't like the way it's doing that, but I'm going to start out P shape. My core cords are acting crazy. Left-handed cords going behind and up. Okay. This is not going to work. <laughs> yes, you can do it this way. No, we are not going to do it this way. I'm going to find my painter's tape really quickly because that is so much easier for me. All right. Taking it apart. Sit it right here. Let me grab some tape. Hold on. I think I know where it is. Yes. All right. Found my painter's tape. I, just, I like painter's tape because it, it doesn't leave that sticky residue behind. Okay. So again, taking the cords, run this, these this direction, run the others this direction. Okay. Just take a little piece of painter's tape. Tape them together on one side, tape them together on the other side. <laughs> just makes things a little bit easier. Yeah, the tying station is great, but sometimes good old tape. There. Okay. Now, <laughs> let's get that cord back out that we were going to use. Okay. So I've cut another piece of cord here. You want enough cord to get about 10 knots. Okay. And you're going to take that underneath, find the middle, and again, you're going to do just your square. Yeah, washi tape is good too. You're going to do your P knot or that P shape, not a P knot, square knot. Left handed cord goes behind and up through. Pull. And again, don't pull crazy tight. <laughs> I mean, you want it to be secure, but don't like, don't go crazy. Okay. Now, left-handed P shape behind, up through. The one drawback to using the um, the painter's tape is that everything is loose now, so everything wants to kind of travel. <laughs> everything wants to wander around and not be still. All right. Okay. Now you want to do like maybe ten knots. Vega, what are you doing? Okay, Vega has found the packing tape. If you hear that noise, that is my puppy who has now decided that she needs to pack up her toys. I don't know. She's just, tape is fun. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> It's so funny. It sounds like somebody's packing something in the background and it literally is just the dog pulling the tape off the roll. It's a good thing I have lots. Okay. So this is going to give you the ability to make your bracelet adjustable because once you have covered your strands here, right, with some knots, then you can pull your ends back and forth to adjust the size of your bracelet. So you can open it up to put it on and then you can pull it, pull the ends to close it up and make it tighter once you get it on. How old is my puppy? Um, let's see, she was born October, so October, November, November, December, December to January, January. To, she's almost four months old. Almost four months old. And she is ridiculously smart. And that's great when they're old, like when they're full grown, right? But when you have a puppy that's ridiculously smart, you would think that's a really good thing. It's not. It's not. It means that she's too smart for her own good and she gets into things that she shouldn't and she knows how to get into things that she shouldn't. And yeah, she's very stubborn too. Yeah, she's still a baby. She's just a little. 
A little munchkin. That's what I call her. Munchkin. Paper and boxes. Evelyn says her, her baby loves paper and boxes. Yeah, mine does too. She just chewed up. You guys know those, um, those cards that I put in orders with the, um, you know, they always have something positive on them. She just chewed up the box that those came in. <laughs> Yeah, she loves boxes. Amazon boxes, those are her favorite. Of course, my cats also love the Amazon boxes. The kittens, I should keep calling them cats. They are kittens. I have three babies in my house right now, two kittens and a puppy. And yeah, they all love Amazon boxes. That's like their favorite thing in the whole world. Okay, so again, I'm just making a, a section of knots. Just a little bit of... Um, I don't know, trivia info for you if you ever needed to know this. Um, when you make a series of knots like this, it is called a sennet. S-E-N-N-I-T. So we're making a sennet of knots. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hear that tape in the background. That's so funny. All right, let's count. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do two more for 10. How big is she now? I'll show you when we get to the end here. I'll show you how big she is. So Nicole's dropping links, guys, that um, I, something that I always forget to let you guys know. Hardwired is open for enrollment this week if you're interested in being a member of the hardwired group so the hardwired group for those of you who may not know is my paid facebook group um it is a group that meets we meet twice a week on uh, facebook live but those lives are private um we do projects every week that are upper level beginner to advanced intermediate um mostly wire but we do work with all mediums i'll show you guys what our project is that we've been working on here in just a second one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so i've got ten knots i'm going to flip this over to the back we're going to do the same thing right we're going to tie an overhanded knot we're going to burn and melt our ends if not and you're going to use glue then you want to make sure that the glue stays only on the knot that you make because if that glue is a big glob of glue it's going to seep through and if it seeps through it's going to get on these cords and then you're not going to be able to adjust your bracelet so um anyway back to the hardwired <laughs> Uh, we'd love to have you. We are a small community, lots of one-on-one -on -one time. Um, we do special things. We do fun things. And we do a little bit harder projects than my regular lives. So if you're looking to up your skills, it's definitely the place to be. Um, you can pay monthly or you can pay quarterly. And it is just a great place for friendship and for building your skills all right so now we're going to take the painter's tape off okay and now we have our ends right so get my ends all on one side here okay so to adjust your bracelet and it it might take a little take a little finessing the first few times okay pull my cords individually so that everything's even too one of these cords is not even hold on was. Hold on. There we go. So it's important before you cut any of this off, you definitely want to even everything up. Okay. But now to tighten and adjust your bracelet, obviously you're just going to pull your ends. When you pull your ends, because this is square knots and we did our bracelet in square knots, you pull it all the way closed. Closed. 
almost seamless, right? It's just a square knot bracelet all the way around. Then to open it, I'm going to very gently. Now, the more you work with it, the, the easier it's going to be to adjust it. But what you want to do is you want to be sure that you knot your ends or put beads on them and then knot them. Anything that is going to keep them from sliding in as you adjust. So you, you want to be sure that you have some sort of stopper on your cords. I'm just going to do one overhanded knot and trim. Now, I know that when I pull my bracelet, that knot right there is not going to slide inside these knots. So I won't ruin my bracelet. And you can use these, like I said, as decorative too. So you can put um, you can put beads on them if you want. It does sound like a packing warehouse. It's totally just a puppy enjoying some tape all by herself. <laughs> so funny. And then trim. And that's it. You've got a really cool bracelet. And remember, we did two, we two, two different techniques, right? That were very, very similar, both with beads, both square knots. And it's just a matter of setup as to getting the different looks. So one, the beads are set on the outside edges of your core. This one, the beads are kind of staggered and you get that really cool chevron shape. So there you go. Really cool. I hope that I have inspired you or maybe even taught you something today. Maybe you didn't know this one. Maybe you didn't know this one. And now you do. Maybe I have helped you brush up your knowledge on your square knots, if nothing else. Um, but yeah, and definitely want to be sure that if you want some donuts, you go check out the donuts that Sam has in Sam's bead shop. He's got five, picked up some more while he was in Tucson. Grab your tying station from Beadalon as well as your Beadalon. And then use small beads, any kind of small bead that you want. Sam's got some great beads that would work for this over on Sam's Bead Shop as well. All right. So if you're interested in the, let's see, where's the finished one? If you're interested in what we do over in Hardwired, just to let you know. I've shown this project a couple of times, but that's because we're still working on it. Uh, we just recently, the project that we're going to be finishing up this week is a heart butterfly pendant. Uh, we do a lot of wire weaving. So if this is something that you're interested in, if you're looking to kind of up your wire working skills, come on over to the Hardwired group. To get access to the group, you're going to go over to the Facebook group. You're going to ask to be a member. So you're going to apply to be a member of the Facebook group. Make sure you answer the questions. That's how we're going to know how to send you your invoice. And once you get paid up, then you've got access to the group. Uh, like I said, we meet twice a week and you can always watch those projects on replay. You can even see past projects if you want to. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. We love it. We love it. And we would love to have you come and join us. All right, guys, I'm going to turn you around. I'll show you my little munchkin dog here that is getting into everything. And then I'll let you guys go. Becky, come here. Come here. Come here. No, other side. Come here. So oh, she's growing, so she's not quite as small and squishy as she was, but this is the baby. You can see she's growing for sure. You guys who have seen her since I got her, like she's definitely growing really, really fast. But this is Vega and she really wants to get back to her tape. So remember when I first got her and I was holding her up and she was falling asleep on my arm? That's not happening much anymore. Now she is large and in charge and wants to get into absolutely everything <laughs> so that's the baby there's also a german shepherd a golden retriever and a pit bull on the floor here too but i can't hold them up because they're all like about 100 pounds piece <laughs> diane says is this for beginners diane yes so here's the thing about the hardwired group right before i go so um the hardwired group yes the projects are more are more upper level beginner projects, but I break it down into a way that makes it digestible and easy for everybody. So I'm in the demystifying business, if you will, with wire weaving and wire work, because I think a lot of people look at pieces like that and think I could never do that. I show it to you, or at least I try to, and I think the group would tell you that I, I do a pretty good job of it, breaking it down into a way that you absolutely can 
do it. I make it accessible for everybody. So I also really kind of, we build from the ground up. So your basic wire working skills, uh, wrapped loops and things like that are the beginning building blocks of everything that we do. And we don't ever forget that, right? We always go back to that. So yeah, you know, I, I think that it is of great value to whatever skill set you've got. So don't don't shy away from it if you think you're not quite ready. I think you would be surprised to see. So Jessica says you changed your desk around. I did. <laughs> I made a big change in this room. All right, guys. So I'm going to go. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Arlene. Thank you so, so much. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for letting me be a part of your beating journey. Guys, I've got big things coming up soon. So uh, if you're just now getting started hanging out with me, you're in the right place. We're going to be doing more things this year. So um, yeah, don't forget you can catch me on Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern time for our Feel Good Friday show. That is my favorite day of the week. Looking forward to that. For you guys, Hardwired will be meeting this afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Don't forget about that. We're going to be finishing up our Heart Butterfly Project. And everybody else, have a wonderful rest of your week. I'll see you guys on Friday. Okay? I love you. Bye.